Hey Credit Warriors, Credit Shifu here, and well, you've probably seen by the title of this video, some negative changes are coming to the Chase Sapphire Reserve. So, let's go through this. Basically, a couple of days ago, I noticed this post on a uh, Sapphire Reserve cardholders group on Facebook. Now, this is a private group, so I'm going to blur out the names here, but uh, basically, I'll read it out to you. Uh, just heard from my local banker at Chase that some changes to the CSR are coming in August. You'll no longer earn 3x on transactions that trigger the $300 travel credit. Priority passes will only allow two guests, not unlimited. Purchase protection is going away. And this guy underneath says, well, I guess my business is going away too. Uh, actually, by purchase protection, I think what he meant to say was price protection. But anyway, there's really no need to overreact on this. Uh, to me personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, some other blogs have started reporting on this too, so there's information coming in from multiple sources. I guess bankers now are telling clients that this is going to be happening. Uh, Doctor of Credit got hold of what looks like an internal document um, that basically details these changes are coming in on August 26th. And uh, in early May, uh, bankers can start telling clients about them. So let's go through. Basically, there are three changes, and we'll, we'll go through them one by one. So the first one is the travel credit. So the CSR, Chase Sapphire Reserve, offers a $300 travel credit that reimburses you $300 per year for any kind of travel, okay? So from plane tickets to Ubers to Subway, whatever. It's very, very versatile. It's one of the great things about that card. It brings the uh, annual fee uh, which is $450 down to an effective annual fee of $150. So it's really a big selling point of the CSR, so I'm glad they're not reducing that credit or doing anything to it, but you will stop earning the 3x category um, on the spending that triggers that credit. Now, I don't know whether you're going to be earning one point per dollar still, uh, or whether you're just not going to earn any points uh, on that. No one has, you know, nothing has been said about whether that's the case or not. So let's assume the worst, um, that you earn zero on it. Uh, you would be missing out on 900 points per year, which is worth $9, or you, if you redeem for travel through Chase's portal, it's 1350 that it's worth. Obviously, if you transfer to airlines, worth a little bit more than that still. Um, and that's the worst case scenario. It might be that you still earn one point per dollar on that, that spending, um, which would then take it down to uh, losing 600 points. So I don't know, either, though, either of those two options, um, it's really not a big deal. You're talking like 10 bucks a year that you're going to be losing out on. And, you know, that spending is getting you reimbursed $300 anyway. So I don't think anyone can really complain too much about that. The next one, which... Uh, this was expected, to be honest, uh, and we just did a video a couple of days ago. You know, the Wall Street Journal came out with that article ac accusing the Sapphire Reserve of spoiling airport lounges um, by allowing unlimited guests. So, Sapphire Reserve uh, Priority Pass now will be limited to two guests per person um, for free, and if you want additional guests, they'll be charged at $27 uh, per guest, and obviously, if the lounge does have guest limits, uh, you won't even be able to bring in those additional guests anyway. Um, and this is understandable. I think, you know, we've been thinking this probably would be coming uh, for a while now, at least for a couple of months we've been thinking this. Um, you know, the Chase Sapphire Reserve was kind of too good to be true at the beginning, um, so we knew that some perks were going to go away, and, you know, um, free guess probably one of them. The last one, price protection. Um, this is a little bit unfortunate, especially for people who make use of this uh, perk. It's a potentially quite valuable perk. So what price protection is, is basically if you buy an item with the card and then you see it advertised either in print or online uh, for a cheaper price within 90 days of your original purchase date, you can get a refund of the difference in price. Uh, you can do this up to $500 per item um, for up to $2,500 per year. So it's potentially quite a big perk, you know, worth quite a lot of money. Um, if you do buy quite large items uh, with the card that, you know, you later see for cheaper prices elsewhere. Um, you know, imagine you want to buy something when it just comes out and then, you know, a couple of months later, after the hype is finished, uh, they drop the price. Well, with this, you know, you could get it when it just comes out, but pay the price that they're charging for it a couple of months later. So. It's quite a valuable perk to people who use it. I personally have never used it, so I'm not really going to miss it. Um, but potentially that is, you know, quite a big perk. And it could be costing Chase a lot of money, which is probably why they're getting rid of it. So what's my opinion on this, guys? Well, personally, I've seen these changes coming for a long time, especially the Priority Pass one. 
Um, it's not something I don't think to get super upset about. Certainly the travel credit thing is neither here nor there. Nine dollars per year, it's nothing, all right? Um, the uh, Priority Pass one, obviously it is sad, uh, but people have really sort of milked the, you know, brought loads of guests. I mean, I've bought, the most I've ever bought is three guests and I thought that was excessive. I was talking to one of our viewers last night on Facebook who said he brought five guests into a Priority Pass lounge. And so, you know, people have been using it and uh, lounges are getting busy. And personally, I would prefer to be in a quieter lounge and sometimes to keep things exclusive, you know, you have to make them more expensive, um, you know, more desirable, that kind of thing. We also did a video recently about uh, a survey that Chase had done where they um, asked people if they would support stopping points transfer between Freedom and Sapphire Reserve, uh, and also if, you know, what if points retain their original value, say you transfer the Freedom, you don't get that extra 50%. Would people support that or not? Um, I'm thinking perhaps they got negative feedback from that survey. So perhaps this is what they're doing instead of that in order to save money. Let's hope uh, that that is the case because the real big thing for me about this car, the Sapphire Reserve, is you know the chase trifecta. The fact that you can transfer from the Freedom to the Sapphire Reserve from those quarterly categories. You can get a lot of points that way. This is a points earning card for me. It's not a, you know, so much a benefits card. The Amex Platinum is the benefits card, you know? Chase Sapphire Reserve, it earns me a lot of points. So, as long as that stays, um, I have no problem with these changes. Leave your comments below. What do you guys think about it? I'm sure there'll be a lot of different opinions. As always, please subscribe if you're new. Give this video a like. We'll see you next time with more credit card tips and tricks. Bye-bye.